Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at a web browser called Brave. And I'm checking this out because a lot of you wrote in to me a few weeks ago when I was talking about how Chrome might start blocking ad blockers, and I was looking for alternatives, and almost universally, every commenter said, you gotta check this browser out, I think you're gonna like it. I have been playing with it now for the better part of a day, and I am quite pleased with it. And I'm going to step through what you can do with Brave, how it's a bit different from some of the others. And in some ways, it might be interesting to think about what the web might have looked like had Brave been the model uh, that the early web followed versus all of this advertising that we get now. So we're going to step through this browser and all the different things you can do with it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this browser is free and I downloaded it for free from Brave. Uh, they are not paying for this video nor reviewing or approving it before it gets uploaded. Uh, but we are going to put an affiliate link down below in the video description because if you download it for free and use it, uh, we can get a little bit of Brave credit, and we'll talk about what that credit is all about here as we step through the video. So let's get to it now and see what this browser is all about. So here we are on the home screen of the Brave browser. As you can see, it has blocked 29 trackers. It has also blocked 837 ads. It has upgraded me to a secure connection eight times, and it has saved me now 44 seconds of browsing time. Now this browser is running with the Chromium engine, and that is the open source component of the Chrome browser. Anyone can take that Chromium engine and make their own browser out of it, and that is what the team at Brave did. Uh, and it also works with the Chrome extensions for the most part, so I was able to get my LastPass password manager installed here. That's what I use on Google Chrome. It'll work with other extensions as well, but a lot of the extensions that you might want to install, like an ad blocker or maybe a Tor, uh, extension are all built in to this. So there's a lot of things that you might be using now as an extension that you won't need to use uh, when you install the Brave browser. I have found that browsing on here feels a lot like my existing Chrome browser. The interface feels very similar. Uh, the speed of the browsing experience is pretty much the same. I am running this right now on my MacBook Pro. It's an i7 based machine. Uh, you did see that menu take a little bit of time to render in, but it takes just as long on my regular Chrome browser. And I really, to be honest with you, as I've been playing with this, haven't really noticed anything different. It really feels identical to what I was using before. So the learning curve here is pretty much next to nothing if you are familiar with using Google Chrome. It's a very, very similar interface. All my bookmarks came over. They all look the same. They're in the same place. Uh, so I've been quite pleased with this experience so far. Uh, now the ad blocker is built in. So if I go to a very script heavy, ad heavy website here like CNN, uh, you'll see how quickly everything comes up. I'm on my wireless AC network. It might be even a little faster perhaps on my uh, ethernet connection. And then what it's doing is it's blocking the ads, which is why it's loading up so quickly. And as you can see here in the uh, upper right hand corner, it has uh, shields up right now and it has blocked 30 different items from being displayed, including 30 different third party trackers uh, that CNN is using on their website. Uh, so if I just jump back here and go over to my regular Chrome browser and go to CNN where I have this site whitelisted from my um, from my ad blocker here, you'll see the site loads up and then all these ads come in, all this animation going on that really slows down the experience on slower computers. And all of this stuff here is not showing up on the Brave version because we have blocked the ads. Now you have the ability though uh, to whitelist the site on Brave as well. So I can click on the Brave uh, Shields Up icon here. I could decide to uh, whitelist CNN here so it will always show me the ads. And you can see it just uh, re-rendered the page here and we should see those ads now popping in. There they go. Or I can re-enable it here. And once I do that, it will refresh the page and begin blocking things again. You also have the ability to block scripts. And this is not something you want to set on by default because many websites depend on scripts now. Uh, but if I turn this on, you'll see it breaks the page immediately. Uh, but I could go through and troubleshoot and see which minimal set of scripts I need to get the uh, site to work. And once you turn those on, you can kind of experiment and see uh, which scripts you can get away with not using. And it was nice to see that level of granularity here that you can really poke around and uh, block a lot of things that aren't necessary and still get the full experience. Now you can set global settings. So if you want to have everything unblocked by default, you can do that and then just block the things you want. 
Uh, if you go over to Shields here in the settings, you can make those adjustments if you wish. Uh, you could also block scripts by default here just by throwing that switch, but again, that will likely break uh, most of the websites that you visit. They also have social media blocking that will block the Facebook logins and embedded posts. So if you're concerned that Facebook is tracking you throughout uh, different websites, you can disable their ability to do that. There's a lot of stuff here that you can poke around with and adjust to where you want it to go. I like the fact that they've made all of this very easy to look at and understand. It's not too busy. You can jump into uh, more advanced settings if you want and really dig in. Uh, but by and large, it looks like they're on the track here to make a very user-friendly, consumer-focused browser uh, that is focused on this ad blocking and security. Now, they also have a private or an incognito mode, which I'm sure many of you already use. I use that, of course, when I'm out holiday shopping and I don't want my wife going through my browser history and seeing what I'm buying her. It's a very good way to uh, keep those holiday gifts secret. I know you all do the same thing with your private sessions as well. And this one works just like the one on Chrome or Safari or Firefox works like, which is that it creates a temporary session. Everything you do in here goes away when you close the window. But just like other browsers, when you go into private mode, you're not completely anonymous because all of your traffic is still originating from your home network. Now, there are ways to anonymize your connection, uh, usually through the Tor network, short for the Onion Router. And what that does is it takes your traffic, it bumps you around to a whole bunch of different nodes around the world, and you pop out somewhere else, and it's impossible really to trace that traffic back to you. And what's cool about this browser is that when you go into private mode, you have an option to load up a built-in Tor client. So if I go over here to private, while I'm in that private window, I can say open up a Tor window, and now I have a private window with Tor that's going to route me through the Tor network and I should be able to pop out somewhere else in the globe anonymously. Uh, so for example, if we go to IPLocation.net here to see where our traffic is uh, originating from, we'll likely see that I am no longer coming out of a server here in the US. Now one thing to note, as you can see on screen right now, is that it will be a much slower connection uh, because you are getting bounced around through a bunch of different servers that may or may not have good connections or may be overloaded at the moment. Uh, but as you can see right now, I am popping out in France uh, versus my home IP address here in the United States. Now, one of the fascinating things about this web browser is that they're also trying to come up with an alternative revenue stream for creators and website owners who are going to lose revenue when somebody is coming by on their Brave browser. And if you go into the settings, you can see how they are trying to build out something a little bit different here. Uh, this setting here is called Brave Rewards, and if you activate this and turn on advertising, what's going to happen is that they will send ads to your browser, and when you get those ads, you will get paid for the brief bit of attention that you give to those ads. You can then, in turn, take that ad revenue and distribute it out to the websites that you're visiting or directly tip a website directly if you wish. Now, there's a lot that needs to be worked on here, uh, but that's the concept in essence. Now, the ads right now appear as a system notification, which to be honest with you is not ideal for me. It's a bit off-putting, uh, but you can adjust the frequency in which those appear. So right now, I've got it set to five ads per hour. I can turn that down maybe to three and close that window. And what'll happen here is that when it does have an ad to display to me, it actually will come in as a Mac OS X notification here on my Mac. On your Windows device, it'll come in as a standard Windows notification. It doesn't appear in the browser at all. Uh, and what it will do is count how many times you've received one of those things, and then they will transfer some cryptocurrency uh, into your Brave wallet that sits on your browser here. Uh, so you can see, so far I have 0.40 BATs, which translates out to about 13 cents here uh, in the United States. Now what I can do with this money is I can just let it sit in my wallet, or what I could do is distribute it out to the websites and YouTube channels and Twitter uh, profiles that I'm looking at, and those creators have to set those things up. Uh, I set up my YouTube channel through their revenue share page earlier today. I had $30 waiting for me in there, which was great. So all of you who have been watching on the Brave browser, thank you, have been uh, anonymously transferring money into my account and it was waiting for me uh, when I pulled that up. Now what you can do here is set up a monthly payment amount. Uh, so for example, it's, it's defaulting at about 
uh, 20 uh, BAT or $6.45. And what'll happen here if I don't do anything is it will distribute uh, out that revenue based on how much attention I have given to each site. Now, if there's a site that I don't want to have getting my money here, for example, Walmart has enough money as it is, I can just click on exclude this site. I can exclude Facebook from this list. And now it'll recalculate the attention here and only uh, distribute those funds based on who is currently on screen here. Now, brave.com is one of the sites, which is of course the site for this browser. They have a little check mark next to them. Uh, that's because they have set themselves up to receive these BATs now. Uh, and they will get that revenue into their wallet uh, versus these other sites that are basically going to be uh, held in escrow until they come in and register and get themselves set up with Brave. Now, unfortunately, though, they don't make it easy at the moment to add money to your account to distribute out to the websites that you want to help. Uh, so, for example, if we don't see enough ads here to get our 20 BATs, uh, what it will do is probably distribute whatever I did earn over the course of the month looking at those ads. Now what you can do is add funds, but unfortunately you have to use cryptocurrency to do it. Uh, they do accept four different coins, including the BAT, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Uh, so you would have to set up a relationship on a site that can convert your dollars to Bitcoins, for example, in order to get funds in at the moment. Uh, they did say they're going to add credit card support in the browser soon, but right now it is cryptocurrency only. Uh, they have a relationship with a site called Uphold, uh, which is managing this for them. So you can set up an Uphold account and get your money in that way. But I believe there will be some transaction fees for getting your wallet loaded up. So unfortunately, it's not all that easy to do at the moment. Now, one other thing you can do if you have money in your account is tip your favorite website or creator uh, directly. So if I click on the uh, little triangle icon here, which is right next to the ad blocking icon, I can just go here and send a tip uh, that will send some BATs directly to that creator, uh, which will go obviously outside of that automatic distribution. So I really like this concept. It would be nice if it was easier to put money into it. And I think over time that will happen. Uh, but right now it's really something that will work only for people that have some cryptocurrency or are not afraid of going through the process of acquiring cryptocurrency. Now they do have a synchronization feature in Brave and they will be expanding this in the future. Now right now I have three devices synced up, this MacBook Pro, my iPhone, and my little MacBook. And they get now all of their bookmarks synchronized between them. Now what's cool about how Brave is doing synchronization is that it doesn't require an account to do so. Uh, so what happens is your bookmarks in this instance are encrypted at the client side. It will upload a blob of encrypted data, I believe, to Amazon S3, but nobody can read it unless they have the private key, which nobody has but you. And what you do is set up that private key on other machines here by clicking on view sync code and setting it up that way. So you can have uh, many devices synchronizing their bookmarks together, and that data is inaccessible to anyone except those computers that you have added to your list of authorized synchronization targets. Now the problem with this at the moment though is that it only does bookmarks. So your wallet is not synchronized. All of the rewards data, including how to distribute the contributions is not synchronized, nor is the uh, money you are earning from looking at ad synchronized. This is on their roadmap to get into a synchronized state, but right now every browser you set up will be unique in that way. It is possible to export your wallet and have that wallet be the wallet across all your devices, but all of this advertising stuff will accumulate locally per browser. And of course, the auto contribute here is only going to measure attention based on each individual browser. And over time, again, they will uh, rectify this situation. But right now, it is going to be a little tricky to really make good use of this ad system. Now, I also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, which is a performance benchmark we run on all of our PC reviews. And on this MacBook Pro here, I got a score of 58.9 on version 2.0 of that test. And I got a score of 52.2 on the Chrome browser running on this same computer. So Brave did a little bit better there. But it could also be due to the fact that I have a few extensions on Chrome that I have not installed on Brave. But nonetheless, it was doing just a little bit better performance-wise and 
for my perception, it was feeling about the same. I really like what they're doing here with monetization. I hope they can get the synchronization working across browsers because that will certainly make it easier to manage. I also hope they can make it easier to get money into this thing so I can start supporting my creators in a more convenient way. Uh, but I think this is a really neat idea, especially given that you can set an amount and just have the browser determine who gets what based on the amount of attention you gave to each of those sites. That is really cool. And I think if something like this existed when the web first took hold, uh, perhaps the entire world would be different now. And I'm really eager to see how this plays out. And it was very nice to see I had some money waiting for me uh, in my creator page when I went in there to see how to get it all working. So altogether, I think this is pretty cool. And it could be the future, or at least part of the future, rolling forward. And I do like just how easy it looks like it's going to be for regular users to figure out. So keep an eye on Brave. Check out the link down below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.